All right. So once first... again, oh, go ahead. Gosh, it's a burden being right all the time. I know how difficult it must be. Well, I wouldn't know because I'm not right all the time. What's going on, everybody? It's the Beef Boss from the Beef Team here bringing you another episode of Storytime with Duke Beefington. Last episode, I wandered around the desert playing Pokemon, and we talked some more about college, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the impacts that it has had on our lives. And we ended things off by discussing Harry Potter. And we, you know, finished off last episode talking about jk rowling and some of the things that she's done that we don't really appreciate uh duke beefington do you have anything you want to say about that like i don't know like it was like in the 90s and like i don't know inclusion wasn't really something you thought about as a writer i dabble one thing you, you learn is write what you know. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling is white. Yeah. So. And I guess, I guess just to mention, huh? like, so I don't mean to cut you off. I guess just to mention really quick, I have no issue with the fact that, like, because I think the the reason that the whole tweet from J.K. Rowling started <laughs> was because people were upset that the actress that played Hermione in the play was African American. And, again, like, I have no issue with the fact that the actress that played her in the play was African-American. I think the, the bigger issue that people were complaining about wasn't that that happened. I think it was just frustrating that J.K. Rowling specifically went back and tried to rewrite, you know, rewrite her own story. Because in, in Harry Potter, it explicitly states, you know, that Hermione is one way, and then J.K. Rowling came out and was like, Who's to say that that's true, which is just confusing because it, you know, she said that it was true, <laughs> you know. As a theater person, there's something called the willing suspense of disbelief. Yeah. Yeah, just, it's a play. Actors, that's not really Hermione. Exactly. When you're, where people have said, like, when, I never... Were people upset when George Washington, or George Washington and Hamilton was black? Yeah, like it. Probably, but people. Are you still there? Yeah. Did you hear me? You you cut out a little bit after you said people. Yeah, Hamilton when they had a black guy as George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you keep cutting out? But it didn't. <laughs> sorry. What? Sorry about that, guys. We're having some audio issues. You keep cutting out. <laughs> Someone resets the internet, I think. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. In Hamilton, they had an African American play George Washington, who was. A white English person. Did people freak out about it? Probably. But no, but it didn't matter because it was a play. Yeah, and then obviously, you know, Hamilton is, you know, fucking crazy famous. <laughs> you know, just as, as a play, it's ridiculously well known. And, you know, I don't think, you know, I certainly don't think that, you know, George Washington being black takes away from the story. I mean, if anything, it adds to it, um, you know, just because there is certainly a lot of discussion just about the foundings of America and, you know, and the role that African-American, you know, people had in that and just, you know, so I think if anything, you know, George Washington, you know, being African-American in the play actually adds to it, you know, so like I have no, you know, I have certainly no issue with different you know, differences in, in race with characters. It just was frustrating because J.K. Rowling, you know, basically discredited her own work. Just, you know, discredited her own work basically just to make make a point, but it just didn't really get across all that well, I don't think. But, I don't know, I... So, 
Oh, go ahead. I'll say back to Harry Potter. And God, what is there to say about Harry Potter that hasn't already been said? We could always complain about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. <laughs> I already said, like, time travel in a story makes things super, super difficult and confusing. Yeah, I... You know, the one thing I will say is that, you know, I, for those of you that don't know, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child was not written by J.K. Rowling, and it shows. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It's not good. He declares it canon, though. Yeah, which is unfortunate. I, I really wish he hadn't done that. I mean, it's not, it's not bad, like, it's not terrible, it's just, it's really not great. Yeah, could be better. They made some interesting choices. Yeah, it, like, I think my biggest issue with it is that they basically took what could have been and should have been, like, two different books, and spread it out or basically condensed it into one play. It was just like, you, you could have, you know, you could have drawn this out a little bit and fleshed things out more and had a really compelling story. And for whatever reason, they just didn't do that. But I, I'm not sure what your thoughts on that are. Well, you're kind of breaking up and in here, but I agree, probably. I was, um, I was just saying that they, they probably could have and should have broken up Harry Potter and the Cursed Child into two fully-fledged books to make a more compelling story. Or made it into three books, make it a trilogy. I mean, really, they could have, because they, they skipped so much with that time jump, it's, um... You know, because they basically jumped through several years of of the, you know, of the kids schooling. It's like they could have actually fleshed that out and turned it into its own thing. And instead they were just like, nah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, so. They go from uh, Albus's year one to year three, I think. Yeah, they do four. like year three or four and it, it's. I mean, it's cool from a storytelling perspective that they tried to do that. I just don't think that it was executed very well. You know what I mean? You still there? Yeah, still there. Okay. I want to just throw something to mention. Like, I saw this meme with Harry Potter. Like, the order was composed of mostly Weasleys. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would not, I would be surprised if the Weasleys don't go down as the most influential wizarding family in the wizarding world after the Second War. Yeah, which is kind of funny to me, all things considered, because, you know, it's like everyone in the book, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the people in the books look down on them quite a bit. They're poor... <laughs> Like, Mapo calls them poor, and Ron's dad is, like, into muggle artifacts. Yeah, I mean, you know, and a lot of the, like, there's a lot of really interesting social commentary in, um, in Harry Potter, just when you look at it, like, obviously it was, you know, a lot of it is, is largely s symbolic, of, well, not symbolic, but kind of largely echoes a lot of the, like, what went down with World War II, just obviously with you know, yeah. the the racism, like the, I mean, it's yeah. I guess I guess it is racism, just with like the wizards and the muggles, and then there's obviously some some commentary on on like the labor movement with, with house elves. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, it's it's really interesting. Uh. Well, I guess, I guess this isn't really a great question to ask, because uh, you haven't read 
most of them, but I was going to say, what's your favorite, uh, what's your least favorite Harry Potter book? Other than Cursed Child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My stepmom has read them all, and she says her favorite is Order of the Phoenix. Her favorite? It's all her least favorite. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say... I thought you said her favorite was. I was like, oh my god, that's criminal. Yeah. Ugh, Order of the Phoenix is rough. It it wasn't bad by any stretch. It was just so damn slow. <laughs> what does happen in Order of the Phoenix? I know, like, uh, the Ministry is won't acknowledge that Dumbled that Voldemort's back. Yeah. Is there like a specific reason why? Um, it's, I mean, okay, like, not to, not to be terribly political, but, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm giving a politics spoiler warning here, but I mean, I guess the best way that I can kind of describe the plot of Order of the Phoenix in a way that makes sense is like, you know how Trump was like, Corona's not real, and everyone was like, you know, dude, what the heck, obviously it's real, it's kind of a big deal, and Trump was like, nah, this is fine, that's pretty much how it was with the Ministry of Magic and Voldemort. <laughs> and because they denied his existence, he was able to regain a lot of his followers and influence very quickly. Yeah, so I mean, actually, it's, it's honestly a really good example. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but but it is. I mean, I guess it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. Also, I also got got to commend commend Voldemort for his uh his the moves he make in the second version war war when he comes back. He takes over the press and like influences the Ministry of Magic and completely takes over. Good on him. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Took him... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I think the first Wizarding War lasted, like, it took him 11 years to get, like, all the wizards fearing, and just took him, like, three when he came back. Crap. Sorry, I'm, I've been trying to catch a Pokemon for the team for the better part of, like, five minutes, and I finally found the one I was looking for, and it fucking killed it. <laughs> what, what Pokemon was it? Uh, Sandile. Oh, you were looking for Sandile? Yeah. A certain gym? Yeah, I... No, it's for the... We finished the third gym. I'm, I'm just getting one for the team to have for later, but I'm, I'm on my way to the fourth gym. I just... I'm looking for a Sandile that's a certain ability and level, and I finally found it, and then I accidentally killed it because I used Bug Bite thinking it wouldn't kill it. <laughs> it's ground type. It's yeah. Ground and dark. Yeah, ground I like Sandile. I just don't like the coloring of its final form. You're not you're not a fan of the red. Yeah, I'm not, not, I don't really like the red. Hmm. I always kind of liked it, but I guess I could see the I guess I could see the the frustration. I mean, it's it is one color for the rest of its evolution, and then it kind of randomly changes, and it's just like what? <laughs> I don't know, man. You'll find it shiny. Oh my god, that makes. <laughs> That'd be so funny if I found a shiny during the conversational let's play and not the actual, or not even let's play, but it would be funny if I found a shiny in like the background gameplay of the story time series and not in the actual let's play that we did. <laughs> it would just be my luck too, you know. Um, one last thing about Harry Potter. Apparently... J.K. Rowling, like, she was like, McGonagall didn't become headmistress. She was a bit old and wouldn't do it. But then in the play, McGonagall was the headmistress. Yeah, I mean, that's just another reason why Cursed Child is not a well-made production. I mean, yeah. they don't even but I follow. Mean, in... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I could see my uncle maybe taking over the position because, you know, Hogwarts was completely destroyed and the trust between parents and the school and the government was broken. She yeah. could, like, take in charge to, like, regain trust for a few years, like, yeah. put off her retirement. 
And then once things were up and running again, she named a more permanent attendant to the position. Yeah, sorry, I had to look away from the screen for a second. I got a rather emergent text. I just needed to make sure everything was okay. Did you hear none of that? Um, I did hear I did hear what you're saying, McGonagall being headmistress because of restoring trust. I was tracking with it. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Just do it for a few years and then name us the sex successor. Yeah, it makes sense, but although you have to remember... First child takes place like twenty years after after the events of the last um last book. Yeah. So I guess uh, I mean our was completely destroyed. Yeah. I mean But they have magic. Yeah, so this is true. It would have taken them, I don't know, a day to fix everything. Yeah, I, uh, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that is one of the unfortunate things about having magic in a story, is that it kind of becomes plot armor in itself, because it's like, you know, and this is kind of a thing in the movies, too, where it was like, you know, the Weasleys are super poor, but you almost kind of wonder, how could they be that poor if you can use magic for almost anything? Yeah, couldn't they make, like, train a bunch of gold? Well, I think... Uh, or I guess... If I remember right, they went, like, the story goes out of its way, basically, to be like, you can't make gold out of nothing, that's ridiculous. Um, I mean, like, turn a material in the gold, but then again, well, the Philosopher's Stone could make gold out of nothing. Oh yeah, that's true. Like, I... They didn't, like, interact with the human world, so just making a bunch of gold wouldn't, like, they couldn't just... If they interacted with the human world, making a bunch of gold from metal, then they would be rich. But in the wizarding world, you know... Maybe. Unless they had, like... Eight kids, I think? Maybe seven? Yeah, there was a lot of them. Yeah. Pretty sure it was, like, seven. Yeah. I, uh... So, yeah, and... Oh, parents, though, yeah. A lot of kids, a lot of mouths. That's, yeah, that's fair. God, I just want to find the Pokemon I'm looking for. <laughs> I'll, whisk, I'll help. Uh, I, um... Come on. Are you saying, come here, boy? <laughs> I'm whistling for the Pokemon. <laughs> I'm currently getting my ass beat by a Sigilyph right now because it used Tailwind and my team wasn't ready for it. So, we'll see. I'm probably going to end up dying before I can even catch the damn thing. <laughs> Whoosh. But that's okay. Oh my god, I found it. Ah! <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, absolute bro here, Duke Beefington, calling in the big guns, getting us the Pokemon. Let's go! Did you just kill it? No, I didn't. I did not. You yelled no. I said let's go. Oh. Ye of okay. little, ye of little faith. Well... You, you have a record of doing that. Okay, alright, listen, okay. Let me just clear something up for the viewers here. I am not bad at video games. I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. decent. I would say, I would say that I'm like, below, well not below average. I would say I'm like, C plus video game player, like 80% of the time that I'm recording. I'm good on my own, it's just like, Making videos is scary. It's it's a lot more pressure trying to play for, you know, trying to play for people, um, you know, for like videos. I'm always like worried I'm gonna mess up, and then that makes me mess up. It kind of becomes like the self fulfilling prophecy. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. But 
I'm getting better. It's just like, you know, and especially this video I'm making. I mean, this is a little bit, little bit of a tangent, but just like I remember when we started out, I was terrified of making. Damn it! I killed it. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Next time on Grump Games. <laughs> Come on. Oh, next time on Grump Games. Don't forget to subscribe. I really need to pick me up. Jesus. Come on. I'm good at this.